So, about a month ago, I joined the Boss Rush Game Jam, which is hosted by the one and only Fartfish. Before I joined it, I had never made a boss in a video game, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to learn. And I ended up making a game called Rive, which I plan on turning into a full game, which hopefully I can finish before the end of this year. And I didn't make any devlogs during the game jam, because I wanted to spend as much time as I could working on the game. So this one's going to be a little big, but I'm making it now, so yeah. So I'm going to start off with the concept of the game and how I designed it. So if I was going to do a game, which only game mode was Boss Rush, I wanted to make the bosses a little more unique than what you'd find in ordinary video games. And I ended up thinking about giving the bosses a sanity health bar, which you may have seen on a couple of the players, mostly found in Cthulhu games like The Sinking City and Call of the Cthulhu, where seeing stuff that's strange will reduce your sanity, and then you might have to take some pills in order to regain it. And if you lose your sanity, then, well, generally bad stuff happens. So I wanted to do that with bosses. I didn't want to make it so that it would make the bosses completely random, though, because if you start making things random, then there's not really any attack patterns, which is generally what makes a boss fight really good if their attack patterns are well designed. Instead, I decided that I would make it so that once the boss's sanity had been taken out, they would then take double damage. And then I might also, with some of the bosses, make it so that they get a couple more self-destructive attacks that they will use, but I didn't end up doing any for the project that is in this game jam, because I didn't have the time. Moving on from that though, uh, came to the character design a bit. So I wanted not to just have another sword, because basically every game has a sword. While swords are cool, I felt it wouldn't really fit entirely well with my game, with the whole boss sanity thing. So I ended up choosing an axe, and it kind of fits in with the sanity thing, because there's like asylums, which are basically prisons, and then we got the executioner, which is like the main feared thing of the prison, and it kind of turns you into something the boss could be afraid of. I also have a love for advanced movement systems in games. Um, Titanfall, Ghost Runner, Get to the Orange Door, really anything that allows you to just move in a unique way or move very fast. So I wanted my game to have a bit of something with movement things and I do that with all my games basically. And I ended up deciding that the axe would kind of be like the main center around the story, and I'll get more into that later. So while the player would be holding it, it's kind of like a curse, and in order to represent that more, while they're holding it, they would move slower, and while they weren't holding it, they would be able to move faster as well as jump a bit higher, so the axe would be really heavy. In order to have it so that the player could have it and not have it, I would make it so that the player could throw their axe. So then after throwing their axe, they'd get like a bit of increased movement and jump, which would also help them get it back faster so that they could throw it again or melee with it. And I wanted to encourage the player using both the melees and the axe throws. So for the axe throws, I made yellow attacks, which would be attacks you could break with any of your attacks, but it was generally a bit easier to time if you threw your axe at the attack, which would then destroy the attack, and the axe would continue moving, so it could also damage the enemy. I also made white attacks, which would be like big attacks that you couldn't really dodge, but if you melee them with your axe, then it would destroy them. And I ended up finding that the player would use their throne attack a lot more. It was generally more convenient to use it. So I made it that it did less damage than the melee attack. Which, you still use the um, throne attack a lot more, but the melee attack is definitely useful. 
So then I started thinking more about how I would have the player reduce the boss's sanity and I ended up thinking about Doom because you know Doom gets a lot of things right with its very aggressive playstyle of where you have to kill enemies in order to regain your health and ammo to kill more enemies. And so I decided that after hitting an enemy, there'd be a window of time where you could then use some sort of magic ability in order to lower the enemy's sanity, and it would be like a guaranteed hit, but you would want to use it somewhere you wouldn't get hit by the enemy's attacks. In order to make the boss fights less linear, I ended up putting in recovery points, which are basically like when a boss enters a new phase, but before they enter that new phase they'll be kind of stunned for a short amount of time, in which the player can either choose to deal double damage on their attack that then hits that boss while they're recovering, or use an increased sanity reduction ability, so it's kind of like gives the player a bit more choice of how to go through with the boss fight, and it also breaks up the pattern a bit. And I had this old lore document which I had spent a lot of time on, and I was gonna mostly redo it, but either way, some of the ideas in it I really liked, so I ended up putting this story into that world connected a bit of the lore and made it fit and I won't get into what exactly the lore is so I'll leave that for the game to teach any of you that want to play it. So then for the story I was thinking that something terrible would have had to happen to the player in order for them to want to kill all these bosses as well as literally drive them insane before they kill them most of the time. Because the sanity bar is optional, but it's generally a good idea to take it out. So the best way I thought it ended up working would be if the player's village was destroyed in a way, doing some kind of war, and then they were after vengeance. So then moving on to the art, I'm not much of an artist, as you can probably tell. All the stuff I've shown on this channel has been pixel art and nothing that advanced. It's really just simple stuff that gets the job done. But I did want this game to look kinda good, so what I did was I watched a bunch of pixel art tutorials, which I will link, and I created a simple and small art style for the characters, which wouldn't be too hard to animate, which I based off of the sword and sorcery art style, but it's simpler and not as good. After my learning, there isn't really too much to say about the characters, but something I think any pixel art indie dev is always thinking about when they make their games is the lighting. I had a look at a selective glow tutorial, but I couldn't get it to work for some reason, I don't know why, and I was considering just using the built-in lights, but I don't like how if you cast shadows in them, then they're going to be straight lines, it doesn't really blend well with the pixel art in my opinion. So I ended up just deciding to use sprites for my lighting, which I would draw each of them for. So then if I wanted to do glow, a simple method for this would be just to copy and paste the frame onto a new layer, and then blow it twice, and then scroll down the opacity till it looks kinda nice. For the environmental lighting, I would draw rays of white and then blur them about four or five times and change the color I used once they were in Godot and the opacity to whatever I liked. And when it came to different shaped environments, what I would do is I would construct what the environment would look like with the tiles and then I would draw the lights reacting to that environment a bit but it would not react to the players or any of the entities in the world. But I overall think the end result ended up pretty good. Finally for the environment, I got started by making a tile set, which I wanted the border of to be fairly saturated in order to kind of highlight it so the player knows where the boundaries are. Then I got to work on a visible background, which I would make a bunch of assets in one file that I would then copy and paste into another file that would have a reconstructed tile map of that screen and arrange them to look kinda good, I think. 
and then I decided to leave the very back of the environment uh, green with some slightly lighter bits, which I would achieve by making lighter green circles on the screen, then using the blur with Divering turned on, and scrubbing them till they were just visible. I also made one scene which had a parallax background, which I had like five layers of to really make it look full. Some other advice I have is that when you make your parallax backgrounds, make sure that the farther back your item is, the lower down it is if you have multiple versions of it. That way it goes more to the horizon line. Another thing is that the farther something is from you, the more it's hued to the color that's behind it, which in most cases is the sky, which is why mountains will often look blue from far away, which isn't something that insane, but it's important to remember this when making games because you can accomplish this fairly easily by putting in a color rectangle that matches your background color in front of your sprites that are supposed to be farther back than just sliding the opacity till it's something you like. I also wanted to make it very clear whether the player had the axe or not, so I did a body animation layer, then two layers for the arms with the axe and the arms without the axe. Then in the programming part of it, depending on whether the player had the axe or not, I would choose which one to make visible. One final tip before I move on from art is that always exaggerate everything, even if it's not entirely realistic. Exaggerate it, because 90% of the time it will make it look better. Now on to programming. So I decided to start off with making a boss that there wouldn't be a tutorial for, so I would know how the flow of the game worked before I would teach it. And initially I had planned on making it so the player would die after one hit, partly because it would promote people to really understand the attack patterns of the bosses in order to achieve highly skilled play and an unforgiving difficulty that would require absolute perfection and partly because I didn't want to make a health bar. But the game ended up being too hard, so I decided to make armor. Following that Doom aggressive play, I would make it so that the armor would only drop after damaging the boss a certain amount, similar to how the recovery points worked. Still wanted to reward players that could play perfectly, so going along with the optional self-destruct theme of the jam, I decided to make it so that you could get rid of your armor to deal some extra damage. Moving on, let's talk about the player. For the movement, it was as simple as making a has axe variable and then just checking whether the player had it or not to decide speed and jump height. Then there's a thing that I probably spent about equal time fine tuning as the entire player, and that's for when the axe gets stuck in something. Since the player can throw the axe, they also need to pick it up, and so when it hits something, it gets stuck in it. Initially I was going to make it that it got stuck in enemies, but I decided that since you would then have to go right next to the enemy to pick it up, it would be annoying to try and dodge attacks while doing that. So I made it so that the axe bounces off of enemies a bit, and hits the ground a little farther away from them, but it is hopefully enough to make it less annoying, as well as the fact that any of the enemies that are going to have hard attacks to dodge are also going to move around, so you can just try and manipulate them a bit and then go pick up your axe. But then I also needed to consider what would happen if the player throws it into the sky, so I decided to just try and make it so that there would be some form of roof for it to get stuck on, whether that's a ceiling or invisible tops of trees doesn't matter. And then if there were any levels that needed to have an open roof to make sense, then I would just have them not require the axe on that level, or possibly even disable the player from throwing the axe. Then there's the question of what if the player throws it somewhere out of their reach. And so I made it so that after getting stuck in a wall, the axe would use a raycast to check how far above the ground it was. And if it was out of reach, after a couple of seconds, it would lose its grip in whatever it was stuck in and fall back down to the ground. Now for the third boss, the trapper, which was the first one I made, I decided that I wanted the player to unlock a wall climb after beating them. That way I could do more weirdly shaped levels sooner so that the axe couldn't get stuck in a corner or something. And so I decided that I wanted to make a boss that would be much easier if the player had the wall climb. That way when they unlock the ability, they would be like, thank frick, now I don't have to go through that again. 
and hopefully not. Is this a joke? Why didn't I have this earlier? And so I ended up coming up with this recurring situation in the boss fight where the boss would go down into a corner and wouldn't move until they were damaged. The problem was that the player couldn't throw their axe at an angle that would hit them without getting up on this platform and they couldn't jump up onto the platform either. If they threw their axe up somewhere and then jumped up while they didn't have their axe, they would be able to get up to that platform. So this forms as a double lesson to also make the player more aware of that movement system I made, as well as throwing your axe somewhere strategic can also be a wise move. Then I also had the opportunity to make this little corridor that the trapper would place a bunch of traps at. If the player were to attack them one by one, then the boss would be able to heal, a feature I decided to add so that the player can't spend too much time away from the boss. So the player would have to throw their axe through the tunnel the reason why I did this is because the area of the throne spinning axe projectile thing is much bigger than the aim line thing. And so this hopefully makes them more aware of this and can help them improve their accuracy. After the trapper, I started working on the start of the game and was going to make my way towards them. With the levels, I made an opening cutscene which would show off a future boss for a full game called Head Collector which blows off the main character's friends and family's heads with a laser and then collects them. I find it kind of funny that the reason this guy became known as the head collector was because I didn't want to store where the heads landed and replace them later, so there's some interesting world building due to a programmer's laziness. Then we have the first boss, which is just an interactive tutorial and then a single attack pattern, but I decided to still make them kind of hard with some kind of fast attack speed, that way the player could hopefully get some decent skills once they had beaten them. I also wanted it so that whenever the player would beat a boss, they would absorb one of their abilities. That's what the real power of the axe is, and there's some lore stuff with it, but I won't get into that. But since this is a tutorial boss, I didn't want to throw something new at the player after just beating them, so I just decreased the player's jump height and movement speed, and made it so that once you beat the boss, it would be what it originally was. I decided not to fit in armor with the first boss because I was worried it was going to be too much at once, so I decided to skip that to the second boss, which would now be the tutorial part 2. Unlike the last boss, it was much easier to use axe throws against the boss. This boss would deflect your axe into the ceiling if you threw it, so this time the player would have to develop some melee skills. So in order for this to work, I made some long ability attack charge ups to give the player time to get away from the boss's attacks or prepare for them. Also in order to make the player fully aware of what armor does, I made an attack they can't dodge. This boss is definitely a step up from the last one. After making them, I realized that I could use another boss between the first one and this one, but I didn't have the time so I just had to force the player to fight something a little out of their skill level. However, I do plan on adding another boss for the full game between these two. Then finally, like with the other boss, since this was a tutorial, I didn't want to give them something new to learn, so I just gave them a maximum armor increase. Finally, I made the menu and UI, which I took inspiration from Hollow Knight's Grim Troop menu theme, and I think it turned out pretty good. I'm not going to go too much into detail about my sound design, but there's a couple of things I think are worth mentioning. For all the bosses, I got my friends to voice them, and even though it's not voice actor quality, I find that if you half cover it with weapon swooshes and effects, it generally ends up sounding pretty good actually. Something I've really wanted to try is to make fighting kind of sound like its own song. So I'd try to make different attacks have different pitches, and any indicators be an instrument rather than a sound effect. Also where it wasn't possible to do either of those, I would hide a hardly noticeable piano note or something in the sound effect, like when you pick up the axe, in order to try and just add that bit more music to the fight. Overall I think it made the game feel a bit more flowy to play, but that's not up to me to decide. Then sadly I didn't have time to do any music, or could've, but it would've been really rushed and most likely bad, so I decided not to, since I already had lots of sound effects. Then I just exported the game, uploaded it to itch, and did a bit of design on its store page. 
After I published a game on itch, I had some of my friends tell me that it was too hard. It was only some, but considering they thought the tutorial was too hard, I took that as a red flag for a game, since tutorials aren't meant to be that difficult, they're meant to teach you things. So I decreased the first boss's health, gave them more attack wind up time, and made their attacks slower, which I think helped a bit. Then I also made the second boss's attack slower, and I'll wait to see how people think of that before doing anything more, since I also had t people telling me it was fine. And that's about all I did, so if you enjoyed this video, or are interested in how this game might turn out, then consider subscribing to my channel, I'll post more devlogs at some point. And I also teach some programming stuff, although I haven't been posting that stuff as much as I'd like to, uh, I still do that. If you don't want to subscribe, consider liking the video or commenting, it helps with my algorithm. So thank you for watching, and have a good day.